Hey guys, Mark from Periphery here. And this intro, I wanted to talk a little bit about hammer-on, pull-off, and legato exercises. In Periphery's music, we use a lot of fills and a lot of sort of spider, I call them spider crawl riffs that are very acrobatic and that involve a lot of sliding, hammer-on, pull-off, and, and, uh, and lots of movement up and down the neck. Now, to get all of that very even, I have a set of exercises that I practice to get my legato even. And, uh, and that is what we're gonna focus on today. So first of all, before we get into the actual exercise, I want to note that my wrist is lightly palm muting every note so you could get the rest of the string noise out of the way and make it so you can really clearly hear each note. Second of all, it's not really about the notes that I'm choosing is why I play this exercise. It's not about the scale that I'm playing it in or the exact position on the fretboard. The idea is to get the legato and the hammer-ons and pull-offs even. And by even, I mean you want the hammer-ons to sound as strong and as confident as the pull-offs and vice versa. And you want just sort of everything to pop out because that's the problem with a lot of these licks is some notes are louder than others. So the first shape that we'll focus on is right here. It's based around the third and fifth frets. So it's a nine note sequence, but it's over a three, four feel. So it fits very evenly into the feel. And the first series of notes goes like this. And again, you want to start slow so you get every note very even and every pull off and hammer on sounding as confident as the next. And again, I'm changing shapes slightly and just bringing it up one position so it's not about the notes that I'm choosing. It's about getting the notes even. So this is kind of just an arbitrary position on the fretboard that I'm using. It happens to make melodic sense, but that's really just about it. So that goes. And again, that's uh, just these bottom two strings. And the next position goes. on the 7th and 10th frets, and then it finishes off with a, with a pretty long stretch on the 8th and 12th frets here, so. One reason I chose those exact intervals was because it involved all the finger combinations that I could use, and a really tough one to get is these devil horns here, the, uh, the first and the pinky. It actually helps me when I add one or two notes into a already existing exercise to make it odd or to make it feel uneven or awkward because it helps me actually get acclimated to awkward feels and in our music we, we have a lot of that going on and it's predicated on you as a musician individually being comfortable with playing over odd or awkward feels. So playing exercises that involve a 7 or a 10 or some number that you're not used to is actually quite helpful. So this is quite similar to the first exercise that we went over. The difference, like I said, is I'm adding a note, and the note being just one open string. Again, it's not about making melodic sense of the exercise, it's really just to perfect the legato and the hammer-ons and pull-offs. So 
it begins with the same kind of sequence that the other one started with, nine notes in almost the same exact order. So the first position is only 10th and 12th frets here, and that goes. But instead of recycling the lick, you just add this first note. So that goes. And although you're playing almost note for note the same pattern as the first exercise, the feel is quite different, as I said, as it's over a 5-4 uh, meter. And the second shape in the exercise is down here on 7 and 8. By the way, you'll notice that there's one other difference between this exercise and the one before it, is it's no longer using consecutive strings. And that's also part of getting your dexterity right, and, uh, and part of why I like to change exercises slightly like this. The difference is not major, but it's enough to throw you slightly off and uh, just to get you more comfortable with, with, uh, with different feels. So the next position goes like this. And you'll notice again that I'm just ever so slightly palm muting to get the string noise out. And that, that is partly because it sounds good in my opinion, but it also is a, is a great utility to use when you're trying to get these notes to ring cleanly and you're trying to sort of trap off other notes is to always be just lightly palm muting depending on how you want the notes to ring out. The next position in the exercise is on three and five here. And there's one other slight difference that I'm doing here. The, uh, the top note in this lick is the third string, which is open in this case. So that would be. And I use that, I make a choice to do that just because it's the same note and it's easy to do. And it just adds something different, which is always nice to add. So that goes. The fourth position is just another version of that, and that's on the second and third frets, and that goes. And again, the focus is no matter what speed you play it at, just make sure you're getting everything as even as possible because that's the idea. There's no reason to play it in any sort of melodic context. It's not about the melody, it's just about the feel, and it's about making everything even and comfortable.